Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Gordon Ritchie, and Karen Mills and I have the great pleasure of not only being your service leaders this morning, but also the co-conductors of Coriolis, our church choir, who are making their opening debut for the church year. We hope that you feel welcome this morning. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, multi-generational, religious community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritual-questing individuals joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, including diversity in beliefs, from divine believers to humanists, from pagans to atheists and agnostics. We believe in the compassion of the human heart, the warmth of community, and the pursuit of justice and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather with gratitude this morning on traditional Cree lands that are now part of Treaty 6 and shared by many nations. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. If you are new here this morning, we invite you to stay, be with us for coffee hour following the service. If you've not already done so, we invite you to visit our newcomer table, which is outside in the lobby. And so as we begin the special time together, I would ask that you be sure that any electronic devices that you have are turned off. And so let us begin our service this morning with a prelude. So here's the thing. I was thinking about the service, building the theme for the service, and all of a sudden, just before the service, I ran into a dilemma. Throughout the sermon, I'll be talking about asking for help. I was wanting to get the chalice ready to be lit, and there are no matches. So guess what I need to do? I need to ask for help. (laughs) I need to ask for a match or a lighter. Anybody? (laughs) No, no, no. No, no, no. I will be talking more about this later. Our opening words this morning of our Sherry Woodbury. Here we are in our circle again, a circle of vision and reflection, a forum for deciding and empowering. Here we are at the base of another bridge, another space spanning the shores of today and tomorrow, beckoning us to cross the chasm one day at a time. Here we are gathered again at the cusp of the future, at the boundary that holds community together. Here we are in a circle of love and trust, brought to this moment by a series of choices and promises, by hope and gratitude, by our shadows faced and befriended, with a servant's hand, with a leader's listening, with a parent's love truer than all our inner trembling. Let us model the health we seek for all and lean into community. Somewhere out there, all dreams are possible. Somewhere in here, we are sowing the seed. I would like to invite Donna to come forward and light our chalice, which is about to be lit by a match that I asked for. 
Take from life its coals, not its ashes. Fan the flames of love and justice. Join hands and hearts in common endeavor. And there will be no limit to what we can achieve together. Thank you, Donna. It's hymn of the month time. We're going to be focusing on our chalice throughout the month. You have in your order of service a hymn entitled One Flame. I invite you to rise as you are, as you are willing and able as we join in singing hymn One Flame. So today you have arrived on a very auspicious day. We are about to have a world premiere. In your order of service, you will also find a new piece of music called Guide You on Your Way. It's a piece that's been written specifically as a recessional for the youth of our congregation. I would like to invite the youth to come forward and light their chalice. So let's join in singing for the very first time in human history guide you on your way, and we'll sing it through two times. I would like to invite Sue up for our first reading. Thanks, Gordon. I'm going to read you a short essay by David O. Rankin, a name familiar in UU circles. The Edge. 
A religion that promises a life without tension, a life without conflict, a life without suffering, is a religion of passivity, a religion of mediocrity, a religion of insignificance. Everything worth doing in the world is a desperate gamble, a game of chance, where nothing is certain. What is love? Is it not a wild and sublime speculation that can end in ecstasy or in despair? What is courage? Is it not a hazardous risk of fortune that can end in victory or in defeat? What is adventure? Is it not a blind leap in the dark that can end in joy or in disaster? And what is faith? Is it not a playful, prayerful flip of the coin that can end in heaven or in hell? If I refuse to play the game, if I refuse to risk myself, if I refuse to throw the dice, then I'm never really alive. I am then only flesh, baking in the sun, on a middling plateau with no view of the valley and no road to the peak. Thank you, Sue. Let us join in our next hymn, number 168. One more step. I would invite you to stand as you are willing and able as we join in singing number 168. Tess Baumberger shared these beautiful words with us. Let us make this earth a heaven, right here, right now. Who knows what existence death will bring? Let us create a heaven here on earth where love and truth and justice reign. Let us welcome all at our pearly gates, our freedom table, with mid singing and great rejoicing, black, white, yellow, red, and all our lovely colors, straight, gay, transgender, bisexual, and all the ways of loving our beautiful bodies, blind, deaf, mute, healthy, sick, variously abled, young, old, fat, thin, gentle, cranky, joyous, sorrowing. Let no one feel excluded. Let no one feel alone. May the rich let loose their wealth to reign upon the poor. And may the poor share their riches with those too used to money. May we come to venerate the earth, our mother, and tend her with wisdom and compassion. May we make our earth an Eden, a paradise, and may no one wish to leave her. May hate and warfare cease to clash in causes too old and tired to name religion, nationalism, the false god of gold, deep-rooted ethnic hatreds. May these all disperse and wane, and may we see others' true selves. 
May we all dwell together in peace and joy and understanding. Let us make a heaven here on earth before it's too late. Let us make earth a heaven for each other's sake. Let us sing together hymn number 86, Blessed Spirit of My Life. We'll now take time to share our abundance. This is something that we do each week from the spirit and value of generosity that we place as important in this congregation. Many contribute monthly through debits and uh, automatic transfers, and so uh, no judgment is given when the plate is passed. But we also share with uh, a, an identified charity each month, and this month we are sharing with Child Haven International which was founded and is still run by Fred and Bonnie Cappuccino. Fred is a UU minister, and Bonnie is an immovable force in the world. And uh, they, uh, along with their 19 children, uh, many of whom are adopted, have opened orphanages in Tibet, Nepal, and India, and continue to help those, as well as doing job creation and microloans to support women in finding a sustainable future for themselves. And so as we collect the offering today, we'll keep them in mind. And as we do so, we'll also have another piece from Coriolis. Strong is what we make each other. Strong is what we make each other. Flowing through me, flowing through me, flowing through you, flowing through you. Breathing life, breathing love. Please join us now for our celebration of the offering. It's with the words written in your order of service from you I receive.
I'd like to begin with words by Ramez Sasson. The title of this article is based on the words of Lao Tzu, who said, The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. This is true not only for a long journey, but also for a short one. In this article, I'm not referring to actual journeys or trips, but to goals, tasks, and actions. I'm referring to everything that requires that you take the first step. Even the simple action of drinking water from the tap requires that you walk to the kitchen, open the tap, and fill the glass with water. If taking the first step is essential for such a simple act as filling a glass of water, it is of vital importance for achieving any goal, small or big. If you wait for things to happen, probably nothing will happen. You have to take the initiative and act. You need to take the first step, and then the other steps will follow. The theme for our month of October is toward a thriving future. One of the first things that I thought of was our charities of the month. Here at UCE, we support a wide range of organizations, some local, some international. We believe in these organizations and trust that they are helping to make the world a better place. Throughout the year, we support communities in Latin America and Africa to improve access to health care and education, housing and resources for high-risk youth right here in Edmonton, shelter and clothing for children in India, Nepal, and Tibet, a safe place where GLBT and two-spirited youth can develop leadership skills and personal resilience, and that's just a few. I love the adage, think globally, act locally. I'm proud to say, though, that here at UCE, we are acting both globally and locally. And I love how my personal circles connect unexpectedly through through organizations like these. Last year, my husband and I attended the Child Haven Dinner. Robert asked me how many people would be there. I told him I didn't know, but we did have tickets number 350 and 351. (laughs) During the evening, I was pleasantly surprised to see so many people that I knew. If I had not attended this inspiring event, I would not have known that I was connected in such a specific way to all these friends and acquaintances. I would not have known that we all felt the need to support this particular organization. While at work a couple of weeks ago, I served a customer whose last name was Spady. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. I asked if she was related to George Spady. She informed me that he was her grandfather. I told her that during the month of June, UCE supported the George Spady Center, which is an Edmonton inner city agency that provides shelter and detox programs for those addicted to drugs and alcohol. Little did we two strangers know that we would be connected by a man whose work continues to help others. Now let's bring it right home and look at the journey of one of our members. Here we have a determined, self-assured individual, one who is an excellent planner and well-organized, but who is also a realist. She understands at times that one needs to go with the flow. This makes perfect sense when you consider that her motto is, when you plan your life, Do it in pencil. (laughs) She soon found herself embarking on a medical journey. When a date was set for surgery, she quickly went into planning mode. The freezer was filled, friends were contacted, and booked. Her healing journey was charted out, and the vision of her thousand-mile point to wellness was in view. All seemed well in hand. But upon returning home from the hospital, she was quickly faced with 
a number of unexpected curveballs. Surprise, surprise. Even with all the advanced planning and preparation, there were simple tasks that could not be dealt with easily. For example, did you know that it is virtually impossible to open a Ziploc bag with one hand without having the contents explode across the kitchen counter. I would advise you not to try that at home. She needed, her, she needed help on her journey of a thousand miles. So what did she do? She took a risk and asked for help. I, for one, find that an incredibly challenging thing to do, and I expect I'm not alone. Now let me give you the other side of the coin. Two weeks ago, my cousin's wife posted the following on Facebook. I don't usually post stuff this personal, but I think there is a good lesson here. I've been battling a cough cold all week. Today on my way home, I dozed off on the train. Well, at some point during my cat nap, my sinuses decided to drain down my throat. I woke up on a very crowded rush hour train, coughing and gagging. My throat was closing up and I couldn't get a deep breath. Basically, I was choking. This went on for five minutes. I almost hit the emergency alarm because I thought I was going to pass out during this whole time. Not a single person asked if I was okay. In fact, two people actually moved seats because I was disturbing them. I'm fine now, just slightly embarrassed. But my faith in the kindness of mankind has been bruised. I guess our mobile devices and personal comfort have become more important than helping someone in need. My heart sank. Many of the replies that followed spoke of disappointment in the human race. One simply stated, people suck. My response, I can't and won't believe that people suck. Reread all these messages. They are filled with love and compassion for you. There are good people in the world. I know this to be true. I, for one, will not conform to the notion that people are a disappointment. If I had been on that train, I would have helped you, even if I did not know you. We must take care of each other. There is no other way. Now, we could focus on the reality that no one came to her aid, but we could also address the fact that she did not ask for the help that she needed in her time of distress. So, what is the lesson here? In my thinking, if we are to build a thriving future, how can we do it without the support of each other? I would ask that you take out your hymn books, if you would, and turn to responsive reading 468, found in the back of your hymn book, number 468. It's written as a responsive reading, but I would ask that we say it together in unison. And so let us say, we need one another when we mourn and would be comforted. We need one another when we are in trouble and afraid. We need one another when we are in despair, in temptation, and need to be recalled to our best selves again. We need one another when we would accomplish great great things and cannot do it alone. We need one another in the hour of success when we look for someone to share our triumphs. We need one another in the hour of defeat when with encouragement we might endure and stand again. 
We need one another when we come to die and would have gentle hands prepare us for the journey. All our lives we are in need and others are in need of us. All our lives we are in need. And here's the clincher. Others are in need of us. There is so much that needs to be done for so many. And of course, we can't forget the needs of our Mother Earth. There are times in my life when I feel so overwhelmed by the concerns of the world that I feel unable to do anything at all. It is then that I need to take time away from the world to rest, rejuvenate, and not feel guilty. After all, don't the flight attendants remind us to put on our own air mask before helping others? You see, I truly believe that if we are indeed aiming toward a thriving future, we must do so by taking care of ourselves and each other. But may we remember that while we are taking time for ourselves, the work continues by passionate and dedicated individuals and organizations that we support on our own as well as through this church. I'll close with words by Liberty Forest. It is said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. More correctly, the proper translation from Chinese is, the journey of a thousand miles begins beneath one's feet. I love both these statements. At first glance, they might seem to be almost identical. They are thought to be interchangeable, but in fact, each seems quite different from the other. Let's look at the less well-known but correct translation. The journey of a thousand miles begins beneath one's feet. This is such a beautiful statement. It's filled with optimism and hope. It's about looking at where you are right here, right now, accepting what is, accepting where you are standing now, and not looking behind you, leaving the past where it belongs. It's about seeing what needs to change in yourself and your life. It's about preparing for forward movement, for growth. It's brilliant. It's exciting. It's empowering. It's filled with anticipation. Being aware of what's beneath your feet and what's at the thousand-mile point will help you decide to where, where to place your foot with that first step, and all the others will follow. It begins with the first step. May it be so. Blessed be. As we prepare for a time of reflection and meditation, may we remain seated and sing together hymn number 123, Spirit of Life. Gracious one, keep watch over the innovators, the trailblazers, the takers of risk. 
Invite us to be persons of vision and integrity. Help us to remember the mystery from which possibility is born. Lead us to honor the sacred space where ministries, idealists, and realists meet. Encourage us to imagine more than just what is. Fill our hearts in times of discouragement. Keep our eyes on the long now. Through our efforts, let us know the fruits of connection and a deeper faith. Let us enter into the silence together. We'll let Karen play this next hymn because she rocks it out so well. (laughs) Hymn number 131, Love Will Guide Us. invite you to stand as you're willing and able. Hymn number 131.
That is really fun. I often wish it had more verses. <laughs> Please join me in the response of reading that's printed in your order of service, just on the inside cover, the affirmation of hope. I'll read the bold print and invite you to read the italic. We, bearers of the dream, affirm that a new vision of hope is emerging. We pledge to work for that community in which justice will be actively present. We affirm that there is struggle yet ahead. We affirm that we are co-creators of the future, not passive pawns. And we stand united in an affirmation of our hopes and vision of a just and inclusive society. We affirm the unity of all persons. We affirm brotherhood and sisterhood that allows us We affirm a unity that opens our eyes, ears, and hearts to see the different but common forms of oppression, suffering, and pain. Within ourselves and within the gathered community, we will discover the strength not to hide in indifference. Affirming that hope, publicly expressed, energizes and enables us to move forward. Together we pledge action to transcend barriers be they racial, political, economic, social, or religious. We pledge to make our tomorrows become our today's. We'll have a postlude, extinguish our flame, and uh, sing carry the flame, and then have some announcements. And before we end today, I just want to say a special thank you to a couple of volunteers. Well, I want to say thank you to all of our volunteers, because it Things just seamlessly seem to happen some mornings, and uh, it's because we have such wonderful people who just quietly do their thing and make us coffee and get us greeted and bring us in. But today I just wanted to acknowledge John Spruill, who ushered for his very first time and uh, I think created a very welcoming presence for us. And I also want to give a shout-out to Bill Lee, because many of you won't see because it's hidden, but... There's scaffolding all the way up the stairways today because we're putting, finally, drywall in so that we'll meet fire code in our building. Yay. Um, But it was kind of like a Navy SEAL obstacle course to get up those stairs to do sound. So please thank Bill.
Go your ways, knowing not the answers to all things, yet always seeking the answer to one more thing than you know. Please stand, join hands, we'll sing Carry the Flame. Thank you. 